even in, in our day and age, in our generation, we speak about the tshuva, the tshuva movement. It's not like Bali tshuva of of a hundred, two hundred years ago. Hundred and two hundred years ago, people who had some basic education, Jewish education, and they had some measure of judgment of what is right and what is wrong. And as we said before, if they if they made a cheshbon nefesh in accounting with their own soul, they knew that I'm not as good as I should be, and they tried to improve if a person had, was aroused to return. But in this, in our age, it's not like that at all. It's a metamorphosis process. You're coming, everybody is coming from a place that have if committed of the opposite. With a totally opposite mindset. And now his whole head and his whole heart and his whole soul has to turn around totally. To see something totally new, to be reborn, a new being. That's a much greater, that's the essence of tshuva. That's the tshuva of Nisan, and that's the tshuva that is necessary for, for the redemption and for Mashiach. And this month in Nisan we were redeemed in the past without, once more, the nation was born anew, and in this month we also have to be reborn anew. Being reborn anew is just like this concept of counterintuition. But the tshuva that is necessary for the redemption is a tshuva of, of counterintuition. It's not a tshuva once more that I, I know what's right and I know that I'm not 100% okay and now I have to improve myself. No. It's a tshuva just like, again, the hashkoka parties of modern science, that, that, it's, that what I thought is just totally, totally wrong. My whole perspective on life is just something else altogether. I require a totally new perspective on life. Well, that's counterintuition. So again, that's the that's why we bought this game out here. That that counterintuition, the the phrase for which in the in the literature of the sages is Ifchum Estabri equals Baal Shuvah. That's a true Baal Shuvah, Baal Shuvah of Mashiach. Then we brought another Gehamakri here that it also equals the word, as a simple word, 815 equals the word Shtika. Shtika means silence. The most important phrase that we maybe many of us remember from Pirkei Avot is Siyag Lechok Mashtika. A fence around wisdom is silence. If a person wants to come to true intuition, that is true wisdom, as we said before, the true intuition, which is counterintuitive vis-a-vis -vis the previous intuition or the previous common sense, a person has to be quiet, totally quiet. Quietness, shtika. If from it depends upon shtika. But that's the fence that what, what guards the true intuition. Why? Because once more shtika in Hasidus called chash or hachna'a, that a person is, is ready and willing to acknowledge, to give up his previous way of thinking. As so now uh, begin with the famous story that uh, when Einstein first uh, first uh, discovered and uh, taught his special theory of relativity. There were great uh, scientists, physicists, that were already older people in his time. And uh, they said that, uh, that it looks good on paper, it sounds good, it looks good, but I'm too old. I'm too old to, uh, to get into this new way of thinking about the universe. So once more, you can't be you can't be too old. You have to be willing to, and this is this is the the function of uh, the function of shtika of quietness to be able to give up your previous way of thinking in order to assume a totally new way of thinking about the world. 
Again, this is the most important thing about modern science, that actually uh, the modern scientists can have something very, very important to teach us. That they're willing to make this existential deep of giving up on not just common sense, but of what everybody thought was true, Newtonian mechanics, Hamiltonian mechanics, all of the previous the previous stages of uh, Maxwell, everything had to be given up in order to assume a new, totally new way of thinking about the world. So that's a very, very important Musa Haskell, that we have to be ready to give up our Tfusei Hashiva, is the idiom in Hebrew, our mindsets, in order to wake up to a new spring well, this is the spring, the Chodesh Aviv, a new birth, a new insight, which is definitely counterintuitive vis-a-vis -vis everything that we thought up until now. Right, so this is the general, the general idea. Now we'll turn to what's written on the board on the right. And we'll try to begin with our first uh, scientific uh, understanding. The counterintuitive thinking of special relativity is counterintuitive vis-a-vis -vis to the intuition, to the initial intuition of the Buddha Vasya. The counterintuition that corresponds to the world of Yitzhirah is the counterintuition of general relativity. And we're going to go on to now explain this. And the counterintuition of the world of Briah is the counterintuition of quantum mechanics. Now, before we go on, again, we're going to try to discuss and to explain very simply all of these uh, uh, seemingly uh, difficult and complex uh, ideas. Just modern uh, physics has these two theories of relativity, both of them thanks to, to Einstein. And even though you might think that it's just two different stages of the same thing, never, nevertheless, scientists to this day do not include the two as one theory, it's two different theories. Special relativity is a theory by itself, and general relativity is obviously builds upon special relativity, but it's theory by itself. And then there's quantum mechanics, and there's another thing called string theory as well. Explain it. String theory doesn't have the same essence of counterintuitivity as do the other three. There's something weaker, much, much weaker. Even though the string theory is uh, 10, 11, 26 dimensions and all kinds of weird things. But the essence of counter-intuition is not so present in string theory as it is in the, these three theories which are accepted. The string theory is not yet an accepted theory. The three theories of the 20th century which are accepted universally are special relativity and general relativity and quantum mechanics. And all of these three, each of these three has a special element of counterintuition in it that is counterintuitive vis-a-vis -vis the three worlds that will, that will explain.